Today I have another quick leather project. My wife has this pair of scissors. It's real fancy for sewing and she wants a cover for it but she wants it real simple so I, I made a pattern here and all it's going to do is of course I made the pattern out of an old cereal box like I normally do. So what will happen is, is I'll cut a piece of leather the same shape as this and it'll end up being folded over and stitched and then they'll have one little strap here that'll have a snap so it'll be a protective cover for the scissors so now that I've got the pattern made out I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of leather the same shape I've got a piece of scrap here that should work I'm just going to cut it out and, uh, or I'll trace it out and then cut it with another pair of scissors What I've found when I trace this leather out with a pencil, I have to rub it pretty good. Sometimes the pencil line doesn't show up real well on the leather. This time it looks like it's showing up pretty good. You know what? That's the, um, this is going to be the outside. I should probably trace it from the inside because it's going to fold like this. Let me retrace it on the back here. Okay, I'll go ahead and cut this out. Oops, don't want to use those good scissors, I'll get in trouble. Use these leather scissors. You could do this with a, uh, a knife or a cutting knife as well. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, bevel the edges all the way around on this thing. I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and bevel the edges here. So it kind of has a round edge with this beveling tool. Okay, the next thing I think I'm going to do is go ahead and cut a groove for um, the stitching. But it's not going to go all the way around, so I'm going to use this template and figure out where I want to stop the stitching. So I think it will go up to about there. So I'm going to mark this right where I think that stitching is going to go.
and I cut a groove all around it with uh, this grooving tool. Okay, let's do this grooving tool. And it's set in, oh, about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. Okay, now there's a groove cut in there for stitching later on. You can see that groove. So the other thing um, I'm going to have to do is fold this over and I'm going to wet it down to make it so it's more bendable and I don't stretch the leather. And this is going to end up being dyed and my wife wants it dyed kind of a purple violet color. Don't know whether to dye it first. Probably probably wet it down and fold it and then dye it later. So let me get um, some water and a sponge and I'll just wet it down and bend it over. I decided there's one more thing I need to do before I fold this over. I'm gonna make a little pattern along this high, entire edge where it's going to get stitched with these two tools. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm going to get the leather wet first. I found before too, if you would want to get the leather wet to bend it or do something, it's better to wet the entire surface rather than just one little spot or around the edge because the water tends to make a stain mark. And if you get the whole thing wet, it will dry and look even when you're done. Okay, we'll let that sit for a couple minutes and then I'll come back and use those stamps. And I put it on this piece of granite or marble here so that it's got some weight behind it. So when you stamp on it, it, it um, it's solid. Okay, I'm going to start with this tool. And I'll just make a pattern. Oh, that's blurry. I wish I had focus. Anyway. I'll make a pattern around the edge with this and then come back with this round, it's called a cedar tool. Okay, there's the first pattern. 
I'm going to put a little circle on each one of these, or next to each one of those. Okay, that's the way it's going to look. Next thing to do is to fold it over. Okay, I'll just let this dry for a while and then I'll come back and stain it once it's dry. Okay, I'm ready to put on the dye. I don't necessarily have to dye the whole insides, but I'm going to do it anyway. That way if there's any exposed edges or you can see inside of it, it, it uh, will still look the same color. Generally I like to go over it a couple times in all areas just to make sure the coat is even. Okay, just let that dry.